Hi folks, Irish Trekkie back with issue 80 of the Star Trek, the official Starships collection issue review. This time featuring the Federation scout ship that we all saw in fantastic glory in Star Trek Insurrections. And we have what appears to be a lovely model. A bit of a dent on the box, but the model looks absolutely intact, which is awesome. So we're going to put that to one side and let's have a look at the magazine, shall we? So we have a lovely graphic here showing the panoramic cockpit, the encased nacelles, and uh, the fantastic curves and lines of the Federation scout ship. So we have type scout, operational period is 2370s, length is 24 meters, so not massive, but still sizable, with a max speed of warp 5. So whether that's sustainable, I don't know, but we're going to find out. We have our four contents, Federation Mission Scout Ship, Designing and Filming the Ship, Star Trek Insurrections Production Diary, and On-Screen Appearances, with our mounting instructions there. So, additional information, what do we have? One pilot plus five to ten passengers, phaser emitters, it had that kind of dual beam um, cannon, by the looks of it, and uh, photon torpedoes. So, uh, interesting ship, still definitely Federation vibes. But um, kind of like a combination of several ships, like a runabout, shuttle, um, like possibly like Defiant Desk pylons and stuff like that as well. Warp, warp modules and some up close and personal shots there as well. So this ship is designed by John Eves, who's designed many, many iconic uh, Alien and Federation ships. Nice belly shot there. That's the dock and port that uh, Worf and Picard used in their Type 11 shuttle to subdue data while they were belting out HMS Pinner 4, which is always good. The scout ship was a sleek, streamlined vessel that had its warp nacelles enclosed within the wing-like structures. It was roughly the size of a runabout, and its aerodynamic properties made it equally at home in, atmosphere, uh, in the atmosphere of a planet as in the vacuum of space. And what else do we have here? Uh, the scout ship had a sophisticated array of sensor equipment making it ideally suited for research duties. But it was also well armed with phasers and torpedoes. The sonar ship found out when Data attacked a Roafu's flagship and caused significant damage to its outer hull before retreating quickly back to the safety of the Baku planet. That was a cool scene, actually. And uh, the single person cockpit is a great way to kind of demo um data in there as well here's the iconic uh, scene where they're docking in atmosphere as well so you can see the difference or that's the cool type 11 shuttle which i'd love to get my hands on but you can see the multi-person uh cockpit here versus the single cockpit up there but um that's when they locked on and had this cool dog fight where it was spinning i remember kind of get i saw this in the cinema and i remember like jumping off my seat going oh my god that was so cool remember when i lifted like the turf um with its uh, force its air force when it was pulling up it was great loved it loved it loved it loved it um so what does it say here the scout ship was noticeably larger than the type 11 shuttlecraft as was seen when captain picard flew his craft directly before data's ship picard wanted to stop data in extending the emergency hatch on the top of the vessel and docking with the hatch on the bottom of the scout ship i think that i think the scout ship has a um a dorsal hatch as well so it's it seems like an all-round purpose ship you know again with its armament it could be on like reconnaissance missions and obviously scout and uh, science missions as well for you know um scouting for uh what am i looking for colonization and stuff like that as well where it doesn't really require a starship now with 23 meters um obviously we've seen how big the runabout is um, 23 meters this could be housed in the majority of uh, shuttle bays on starships as well so it could be a great auxiliary ship as well here's a bit on air to air combat um, here is a rundown of the ship profile so phaser emitter no sorry hang on passenger entry door just on the wingtips ah, interesting I was actually wondering where that would be because there's obviously no signs of hatches here. So passenger entry door here, a uh, phaser strip actually along the front. So they're the phaser strips, which is actually cool. And um, they're replicated on the aft of the wings as well. Impulse engine, um, RCS thruster, so in atmosphere. I suppose you could use impulse as well though. 
Um, I don't see any other kind of RCS controls though. It would be nice to kind of see them dotted about around a bit. The scout ship had a fairly large main deflector situated on the nose, just there, um, very much akin to Voyager. Uh, unlike other auxiliary craft, the scout ship was primarily designed to provide an aerial and orbital support platform for long-term exploration, research, and survey missions. Indeed it was. So here we are, the cool bits, the cooler of the cool bits. And um, this is inside the mind of John Eves. Um, some fantastic sketches here with the iconic little black bear that I, I, I've oft talked about. Um, so it just goes into the dogfight and the skies above Baku as well. So I always love these. I don't tend to kind of spoil them too much because I like uh, for everyone else to kind of read them. Here is some details of the hatch. Uh, mechanism on the type 11 I would assume and then here is the concept of the two of them docking there as well so obviously some of the design would have been dictated by the story um, but it still is is pretty cool Um, I did see there actually hang on do, 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 do. Johnny's began looking at the commonality between the two ships um, I repeated certain ships throughout the Federation design so that the ships all seemed to extend from a single technological base, said Ease. The scout ship was a good example as it used the cowled enclosed engine nacelle seen on the USS Defiant in Deep Space Nine. Yes, I was reading from down here. I'm sorry, it was off screen. <laughs> so, here we have a production diary, which is actually interesting. December 8th, 1997. Imagine, we're coming into 2017. Has it been that long? Has it been that long? Great model of the Baku village up here as well. And we're gonna soon have the hollow ship as well, which is nice. I'd love to see some sauna ships sooner rather than later as well, because they're a great design. And a great, a great, a great, uh, a great storyline as well. Um, it's not super high on my rank of, uh, of Star Trek films, but it was, it was an entertaining story. Some subdued parts, um, but some good scenes. Um, obviously we have this was the movie if memory serves where Riker had the joystick pop out and he was collecting the Metreon I guess like the Riker maneuver whatever you'd call it um, first scene in uh, Star Trek Insurrections film appearance the same and designed by Johnny and Herman Zimmerman and up next in issue 81 we have the Zindi Reptilian Warship so let's close out and let's have a look at this model shall we so Let's take her out. I'd say there was a bit of a bang on the box, but nothing, nothing too, too crazy. If I don't hit the camera that much, I hear you all shout. Put all this to one side. Now I've been looking forward to this ship for a while. Um, let me just take out the wrapper on this to get ahead of schedule. So, Starfleet Scout Ship 64618-8. Does everyone have the same numbers, by the way? I'm, I'm actually curious. I've never actually really looked to see if other people have the same numbers. Are they individually numbered, or are they all the same? Curious. So, here we have the Scout Ship. It's got weight to it. It has. Die cast on the top. Plastic on the bottom. But the colour match is pretty good between the two. There's a nice shimmer to it. Not too intense. Um, very much like, I'm just trying to think, very much kind of along the lines of the Armored Voyager, um, not so much like the NX, but it has that kind of glimpse to it, or like the, um, the Voth ships as well, the city ship and the research vessel, but, um, really nice design. There we have the deflector dish on the front and the panoramic cockpit windows are nicely aligned there as well. We're missing the color on the passenger hatches here. They're, they were highlighted as red. Um, but we do have plastic in the engine cowlings for the Bazaar collectors. And the RCS, the RCS are painted, as are the impulse engines there as well. But they're pretty nice. They're pretty nice. Here we have the phaser strips. Now the phaser strips looked a little bit darker tone just on the interior there as well, but they, they're kind of monotone on that. Overall, the sculpt is actually quite nice. Dorsal section has a lot of detailing going down the spine of it, down to the um, deflector dish there, which is pretty cool. 
Um, docking hatch. That's the dorsal docking hatch I was talking about there. Uh, there's the ventral one that the Type Seven, a Type Eleven shuttle, um, jumped on. A bit of scuff there that could have been me just putting it on the base. Um, obviously this was a uh, ship itself, NCC seven five two two seven. Um, right, correctly aligned, I believe. Um, nice clear pennants there as well. And we have the same here. It's unfortunate that they're over, but I think. That's correct though. It, well, it, it's the same on the cover of the magazine. The seven is inlined on the pen and stripes there as well. Um, but that just looks a little funny. You would have preferred them to be kind of narrower for the dash to be in line with it, just as they are here. Um, but that could, I'm not sure if that's the same on screen as well. I'll have to check. We have the registry there as well, just on the sides and a nice little kind of color offshoot there as well i'm not sure what that is could be some lateral sensor array or something along those lines um slightly different shades of gray just to kind of emphasize the detailing just along the dorsal section and there is the deflector dish there as well with some slightly different um paint uh, tones there as well just to kind of highlight that the belly of the beast has some kind of tonal changes here and here on these parts uh, versus the kind of lighter shade here as well. But you see the light kind of captures it quite well. Um, there's where the seam is. It's, it's nicely hidden. I do like it. It's not too vulgar along the leading edge. You can just kind of see it down on the impulse engines there as well. Nice aft. I think that's a good representation of the shit that we saw uh, in Insurrections as well. What do you folks think at, home, think at home? Thinks. I can't even talk right now. Some nice detailing there actually on the belly as well on the ventral section too. And there's an up close shot of the infamous docking port there as well. You can kind of see the metallic tone on the paint there as well. And those decals are nice and crisp, aren't they? And there isn't any huge kind of paint bleed. You can just kind of see the yellow kind of just coming out a little bit on the, on the pennant. We have our nav lights, uh, green on one side, red on the other. And there is an up close and personal. Some kind of dirt here. Mm, a little bit. Very subtle though. Yeah, I like it. I do like it. For a 23 meter ship, it's nice to have it. Um, I didn't think I'd ever have a model of um, the Scout class, but I do like it a lot. Is it not a Scout class? Just type scout, isn't it? Um, so let's see what she's like on the stand and let's compare it to a ship in the line, shall we? So she sits pretty secure. Um, just like all the other ships akin to this design, um, she sits kind of far back on the initial base and overhangs it as well. So it's a good size and it has a nice tilt up there as well, giving you a bit of the look of her ventral section as well. Um, there was no kind of issues with Putting it on the stand, I didn't feel any excessive uh, friction, so I wouldn't be worried about any paint or, or, or scrape off. And it does seem to not impact the decals on the sides of the ship as well. So pretty cool, actually. Um, I must say I do do like that a lot. So uh, let me compare to a ship on the line just so you can get a sense of scale. Just for giggles, I said I would dust off one of the shuttles from the shuttle pack. I know not many people don't have these, but um, I know a lot of design influences came from the Type 9 as well, just with the kind of panoramic uh, cockpit and stuff like that as well. But um, yeah, I might just compare it to another ship in a minute, but uh, I just thought these two would be a nice little companion set as well. So we have the shuttle from Voyager and uh, we have the scout ship from Insurrections. So yeah, look how small the shuttles are. But they are still pretty cool though. But anyway, let's compare it to another ship, will we? So I decided to dust off my Delta Flyer to show you a bit of a comparison here as well. So two fine auxiliary ships. Comparable in size, the Delta Flyer is as long as the Scout ship, but um, has kind of more uh, upper detail. It's, it's, it's kind of got a flatter belly with a higher top, if, if that makes any sense. But um, again, pretty comparable in size, obviously different scales, but um, not, not a huge, not a huge difference. But um, you can see just that silver paint 
really kind of popping in comparison to the Delta Flyer more kind of how you say traditional kind of Starfleet paint as well I say traditional I use that loosely because again a lot of ships did kind of take over from the kind of silver as well moving forward but anyway thanks for watching and don't forget to let me know in the comment section below what you thought of issue 80 and don't forget you can share like and subscribe to the channel as well which always helps support me and thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Take it easy and goodbye.